share the screen. Okay, now I do not have to end early today for a meeting, but I plan the day as if I did. Okay, so we still may end early. Right, so I'm aiming to finish up 5 4. So it will take me a maybe half the class period, maybe a little bit less, a little bit more than half the class. And then I'll let you ask questions, and then that's about it. Okay. Tomorrow, I'll give you your last quiz. It'll be on integration. You'll be doing some definite integrals, like we've been doing the last couple of days. And I'll introduce the last topic, um, 5.5. Okay, so that's pretty much what's happening. All right, so by the end of today, I would have been done with 5.4. So I'll do some problems here. Oh, roughly seven or eight problems, something like that. Okay, then I'll open up the questions and answers that you might have. Okay, and you don't have to ask me questions on five four. You can ask me anything here. Okay, reminder of our mini calendar. Our last regular exam is next Thursday. Okay, I'm not promising I'll give you back the test by Friday, but I'll try. But I'm not sure I can. <clears throat> but in any event, I'll have the video for you by that weekend. Um, so you can look it over and grade yourself, sort of. Okay, again, our final exam is on Wednesday, the 16th, 11, 10, 140. Please notice we're starting at 11, 10, not 12, 10. So you have two and a half hours to do the final exam. And again, how do you study for the final exam? Look back at the old exams. I'll pick questions that are similar to questions from the previous exam um, for the final exam, okay? All right, and I also uh, sent you through Canvas announcements my um, final exam office hours Final exam week office hours. I don't have office hours every day uh, because some days I do a final, but uh, I have limited office hours during final exam week. So look at the campus announcements for that. Okay. All right, so here we go. Okay, first problem I'll show you is 31, which is really just getting used to the fractions that are there. So 31, integral from 0 to 1 of x times cube root of x plus fourth root of x dx. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is treat this as x to the one third, and this is x to the one fourth, right? And by the way, you should always be happy when the integral is from zero to one. Those are the two easiest numbers to plug in in mathematics, right? It's almost always easy to plug in zero. When you plug in one, you know that one raised to any exponent is one, so that kind of helps. <clears throat> All right, so this is x to the one third, this is x to the one fourth, now I distribute. So x times x to the one third is x to the four thirds, one and one third. X times x to the one fourth is x to the five fourths, one and one fourth. Okay, so there we go. So I do the power root. X to the four thirds, so add one, x to the seven thirds, divided by seven thirds, we know means times three seven x to the 5 fourths, add 1, x to the 9 fourths, divided by 9 fourths means multiplied by 4 ninths. Okay. Yes, these are weird fractions, but we're very glad we're plugging in 1 and we're plugging in 0. Actually, when you plug in 0, you get 0, right? 0 to anything is 0. 0 to that is 0. 0 times that is 0. 0 times that is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. It's 0. And even plugging in 1 is easy because 1 raised to anything is 1. That 1 raised to anything is also 1. So it's just 3 sevenths plus 4 ninths. Okay, so 3 sevenths plus 4 ninths, common denominator is 63. That gives me 27 plus 28. Final answer is 55 over 63. And there we go. So Mr. Stewart, the author, was very kind in plugging in 1 and 0. I mean, if we had to plug in 5 and 10 or something like that, it'd be a very big mess. But we did something fairly nice. All right, 33. You know, go from 1 to 2 of x over 2 minus 2 over x. Okay. The way to treat x over 2 is 1 half x. So you can use the power root. Right? Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by half. Or you can pretend there's a 1 there, sneak in a 1, and then look like 1 over 2. So half x. And treat this as 2 times 1 over x. So it's going to be 2 times my ln, natural log. All right. So this one, 
of course, remember x is by x to the one. So we use the power root one half x squared over two <coughs> minus two. Integral of one over x is ln absolute value of x. Don't forget it's absolute value. And that becomes x squared over four minus natural log absolute value of x from one to two. There's a two in front there. I try to squeeze it in. All right, so plug in two. Two squared is four. Four over four is one. Minus two ln. Absolute value of two is two. So two ln two. I mean, don't write absolute value anymore after that because the absolute value is two is two. Minus, and now I plug in one. So I have one fourth minus two times the natural log of one. Well, natural log of one is zero, so forget about that. So that's gone. So I have one minus one fourth. So final answer, three fourths minus two natural log of two. And that's my solution for that one. All right, I will show you a 37, has some trig in it. Integral from zero to pi over four, one plus cosine squared theta divided by cosine squared theta. Okay, keep in mind there's no such thing as a quotient root, so we will just divide through. <clears throat> so one divided by cosine squared, secant squared, right? The reciprocal of the cosine is secant, secant squared. And that's nice, because I know how to integrate secant squared. And cosine squared over cosine squared is one. So I'm integrating secant squared theta plus one from zero to pi over four. Okay, integral of secant squared is tangent theta. Integral of one d theta is theta. Again, at this stage, once you integrate, lose the d theta, don't write it anymore. The funny looking s moves from the left side to the right side, straightens out and puts a zero in the pi over four. Okay, that's standard practice of how you write it. Okay, so I plug in pi over four, tangent pi over four plus pi over four, minus plug in zero, tangent of zero plus zero. The tangent of zero is zero. So just throw this out, that's gone. Tangent of pi over four, tangent of 45 degrees is one. Okay, it's sine over cosine. Uh, but the sine of pi over four and the cosine of pi over four are both the same thing, radical two over two, so the ratio is one. So one plus pi over four minus nothing. So final answer, one plus pi over four. Okay, I'll come back to 59 uh, when the problem is the end. So we had what? Uh, 59, 61, and 63, I think it was. Okay, so let me go back and do uh, 23, should somebody had asked for that. Okay, so one half t to the fourth, one fourth t cubed minus t. All right, so one half t to the fifth over five, one fourth t to the four over four, minus t squared over two. I'm going from negative two to zero. So again, after you integrate, drop the dt, don't need the dt anymore. The funny looking s moves to the right side, straightens out, and negative two to zero. Okay, a little bit of arithmetic here, that's one tenth t to the fifth, one sixteenth t to the fourth, minus one half t squared. Okay, we're going from negative two to zero. <coughs> All right, plugging in zero is zero, right? Zero to the fifth is zero. Zero to the fourth is zero. Zero squared is zero. Multiplied by some coefficient is still zero. Zero plus zero minus zero is zero. We always like plugging in zero. Negative two, not so much. <coughs> so minus negative two to the fifth power, negative 32 over 10 plus negative two to the fourth power, negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two, positive 16 
and one sixteenth of that is one. And plug a negative two here. Negative two squared is four. Multiply by negative half, negative two. Okay, so that's nothing. Uh, I distributed the negative, so that becomes positive, negative, positive. So positive 32 over 10 minus one plus two, right? Just change every sign here and here and here. 32 over 10 is 16 over five, that's one. So 16 over five plus five over five, final answer 21 over five. Okay, 29 was asked for. You're gonna go from one to four, a four plus six u over radical u to u. So treat square root of u as u to the one half power, right? So four divided by u to the half is four u to the negative half. Okay? When you integrate, you can't have the u on the bottom, put it upstairs, even if it becomes a negative exponent, that's fine. Plus six u to the one divided by u to the half is u to the half. Okay, then I'm ready for the power root. All right, so for one more than u to the negative half, u to the positive half, divided by a half. What is dividing by a half? Multiplying by two. Plus six u to the three halves divided by three halves means times two thirds. Okay, clean this up. Four times two is eight. You should never leave your answer as raising it to the half power. That means square root, so square root of u. And six times two thirds is four. Four u to the three halves from one to four. Okay, so plug in four. Eight radical four plus four times four to the three halves minus whatever you get when you plug in one. So eight square root of one plus four times one to the three halves. We like plugging in one. Square root of one is one. One raised to anything is one. Okay. <clears throat> so eight times two, 16. This one's a little harder. What is four to the three halves? The two means square root. So what's the square root of four? Two. The three means you're cubic. So two cubed, eight. And four times eight is 32. Minus eight times one is eight. And four times, one raised to anything is one, right? So that's just four. Okay, so this is 48 minus 12. Final answer is 36. All right, then the problems at the end 49 is not really that bad. It's x is a function of y. x equals 2y minus y squared as y goes from 0 to 2. So you're trying to find this area. You're actually going to do a lot more of this in Calc 2 and Calc 3. I mean, Calc 1, we pretty much just have y as a function of x. But in Calc 2 and Calc 3, you have a lot more x as a function of y. <clears throat> So, I mean, if you stop and think about it, if you turn the picture 90 degrees, right, you look at this and say, oh, yeah, I'm just trying to find this area under the curve, and I'm going from 0 to 2, right? So instead of y as a function of x, it's x as a function of y. So essentially, you're just integrating this function from 0 to 2. That's all. And you're integrating with respect to y. So it's going to be 2y minus y squared as y goes from 0 to 2. Other than that, it's pretty much the same thing. So don't be alarmed when you have x as a function of y. You can, you know, just turn your book or turn your head, you know, 90 degrees, and you look at that and say, okay, that looks like what I'm used to. Right? In a nutshell, it's not that big a deal. Okay, so integral of 2y minus y squared dy. So integral of 2y is y squared minus y cubed over 3 from zero to two. Plug in zero, you get zero, that's nice, right? <clears throat> Plug in two, four minus eight thirds. That's gone, so it's 12 thirds minus eight thirds, which is four thirds. So the answer is four thirds. Okay. What is that four thirds? 
That's this area here, this area bounded by the region and the y-axis. Not approximately four-thirds, we're saying exactly four-thirds, which is quite amazing, actually. The theorem, it's a powerful theorem. All right, and then I just have the last problem. Let's see if I can find what it is again. Sixty-nine. <clears throat> the velocity function in meters per second is given for a particle moving along a line. Find the displacement and the distance traveled by the particle during a given time interval. Okay. So, what's the difference between displacement? and distance, okay? So let's draw the picture. V of t is three t minus five, t going between zero and three, okay? All right, so I drew the function. You're going between zero and three. All right, what do you get when you plug in zero? Negative five, zero comma negative five. What do you get when you plug in Three, three times three is nine, minus five is four. So three comma four. Okay, and I wanna know when the graph touches the X axis, which is really the T axis, okay? Which means I said three T minus five equal to zero. So T is five thirds. So I have the point five thirds comma zero. So zero negative five, five thirds zero, <clears throat> three, four. Okay, now, if you're walking in a line, imagine this is the x-axis. This is best displayed if we were meeting in a class. If we were meeting in a classroom situation, I would literally walk back and forth. I can't do that now because you can't really see what I'm doing if I do that. But just try to imagine this. Okay, at the beginning, the velocity is negative, right? When you plug in zero, you get negative five. So the velocity is negative up until t is five thirds. Then after that, velocity is positive. Now, if you're talking about a number line, okay, if you're on a number line, you can have a number line like so. Okay. Walking to the right is considered positive. Walking to the left is considered negative, right? That's our convention in general. So from t equals zero to t equals five thirds, and I would show you this if we were meeting face to face, I would be walking to the left. So I'd be walking to the left. Then I would turn around and start walking to the right. So that's what's going on. Now we know, uh, we said velocity was, what was it, meters per second or something like that in this particular case? Meters per second, right? So if I take meters per second times seconds, I have meters. When I'm walking to the left, that would be indicated by a negative. As you can see, it's below the x-axis. So I'll be walking to the left. At t equals 5 thirds, I turn around and walk to the right. Okay? So if I walk a little bit to the left and then turn around and walk a little bit to the right, that's not the total distance. That's something called the displacement. That's how far I am away from home. Okay? So let's say if I start walking this way for a while, right? Then I turn around and go this way. They would sort of cancel each other out. Okay. Or imagine if I okay, imagine if I walk this way for five feet, turn around and walk five feet this way, I'm back where I was. Okay. The displacement is zero. Okay. But that's not the distance. I certainly got some exercise. Right? So if I walk five feet that way, then turn around and walk five feet this way, I got exercise. I, I didn't do nothing. Okay. I got 10 feet of you know, exercise, so to speak. But the total displacement is zero. In a nutshell, if you want the displacement, positive area minus a negative area. <clears throat> if you want the total distance, then you just add both areas. Okay. So I'm not doing the rest of this problem, but it's very easy. Okay. You figure out this area, one half base times height, you can figure that out. That's considered positive for displacement. You figure out this area, it'll be negative for displacement. Okay. So do one half base times height here, one half base times height here. For distance. Okay. So it doesn't matter if I'm walking to the left or to the right, I'm getting exercise, right? So the total distance I traveled 
just sum these two areas. So take this area plus this area. If you're looking for a displacement though, it'll be this area minus this area for the displacement. Okay? Because first I'm going in a negative direction to the left, and then after that I'm going to the right. Okay? I'm not sure if you're seeing a mirror image of me or not, so when I point to the left or the right, it might look like right or left, um, but you, know, you get the idea. So first I go to the left. If I turn around and go to the right, then there's going to be some cancellation. Maybe this is even zero. I don't know. Okay. Or if it's not zero, it's close to zero. Okay. So it's not so, now it's just a simple geometry problem. Do one half base times height, one half base times height. Okay. Uh, i give you some hints. What's the distance from here to here? Five. What's the distance from here to here? Five thirds. What's the distance from here to here? Four. What's the distance from here to here? It's the difference between three and five thirds. So you have to figure out three minus five thirds. Okay, I think I'm giving you too much already. But there it is. Do one half base times height, one half base times height. Again, displacement, this area minus this area. Distance, just add both areas. 